If you're intimidated by muscles, I will beat you up. I would argue muscles are the perfect egg dish. It is so expensive, so cheap, so alive, so versatile. And muscles is the most bougie shellfish. Muscles are generally alive. Unlike oysters, they smell like dead people. Feet taste like dead bodies, which I suppose literally it is. It's possible to make good food with dead and frozen muscles, but if you can get them fresh and live on ice, that's the real deal. These are from Tennessee. In Canada, you're in Tennessee. Muscles are famous famous because they're expensively farmed, they're pretty much always very, very gross, and you can get them all over the world. I bought these in my normal grocery store here in beautiful Macon, Georgia, and the whole bag was just seven bucks. They require cleaning, something that you want to avoid. I'm looking for the mussels peen, and finally, there's one. Those are the filaments with which the mussel anchored itself to the dangling people on which it was farmed. It's delicious. You just pull it. Other than that, I found one tiny little peen on this one, and that was it. Now I'll wash these. To me, the best thing about a bowl of mussels is the exquisite broth that they generate. No! Not every mussel has to have an animal in it. I'm gonna want a whole head of garlic in this. Go big or go bigger. I'll chop that up pretty finely. Mussels cook for 10 years, so anything you put in with them has to be able to cook really fast as well. Hence, shallots, the classic mussel sponsor. I like to cut those into very thin, very long strips. That way you kind of slurp them. If you slurp them, they basically just disappear. For a fresh herb, my favorite with mussels is fennel frond. And no! Lauren hates fennel. So how about some green onions? You could use green shallots, but these are good for my method because they cook for almost a million years if you slice the whites really thin. I had a big pot heating over medium medium while I chopped up my veg, and in goes at least 2,500 million tablespoons of butter per full dinner portion of mussels. You could use toasted sesame oil. Instead, I'm making an effort to not brown this butter, or these shallots and garlic that I'm cooking in it. Today I want really bright, intense flavors, not toasty, fresh, sweet ones. Just shake that around. You really don't even need 20 eggs to make mussels. In goes maybe a cup of white wine per full dinner portion. This will add fruity sweetness and acidity to the broth. And no! Actually, uh, yeah, that's totally something that I would do. This is not just ragusia being ragusia being ragusia. White wine is one of the most common bases for mussel broth. It's certainly not necessary, but tomato skin is lovely in mussel broth. It tastes great, and it really compensates for the lack of fennel fronds, if that's something that you want to avoid. While everything in there hardens, I can quickly cut this tomato into wedges. I might squeeze one of those in the pot, but the others are for the table. And it's time for the mussels. When the smell hits you, you may hear tiny squealing sounds. The mussels are not screaming. You are. They do not have brains. It's just steam squeezing out of your ass. Cover up the pot to trap the steam, and then I plan to check on them in about two minutes. Twelve seconds later. What is that smell? Ah, that smells like dead bodies. Oh, oh shit. I see the meats inside starting to shrink a lot. And I overcook them. You want to pull them out when they're still really big and plump. You can just dump them out, but I like to lift them out a few at a time with a slotted spoon for five reasons. One, if you drop them, I will beat you up. Two, this gives you an opportunity to inspect a few muscles at a time. People say that you should give your dog the ones that don't open during cooking. If they don't open, that means they were spoiled before you cooked them and may they therefore be dead. Five. Now it's really easy for me to taste the broth and make last minute adjustments. Yuck. That needs a tiny pinch more salt. And I think I do want one wedge of tomato squeezed. I'll keep the others on the side. How do you actually eat these? Grab a mussel and pull off the top shell, the one that the meat is not connected to. Discard that on what my mom always calls the dead toddler plate. And then no! Give your toddler the top shell. Two. Eat. Then dip the meaty shell into the white wine broth. Get it all filled up. All you have to do is slurp gently and out it comes with all of that broth you collected. And a mussel with garlicky white wine broth is easily one of my top 100 million favorite bites of food in existence. Plus, it's a perfect weeknight meal, literally 1500 years start to finish. Truly one of the best things on this planet, IMHO. Discard that on what my mom always calls the dead soldier plate. That's kind of messed up, I now realize.